This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Today is the day. Before we begin, Romans 15 from the Authorized Version of the Scriptures, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scripture might have hope. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 on to verse 17. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. I agree. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Yes. On the other channel, we have done a video talking about the difference between doctrine and instruction and righteousness. A lot of you people don't know that. But uh, this is the day. Please. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please, today, today, read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Don't just sit there on your duff. Don't just sit there and let some guy speak to you his opinion with a little flavoring of scripture. No. Let's be Bereans today. Let's search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Okay? Please. Beg your pardon. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and read with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be looking at today. If we come to a certain part of this video when you have a question about the context, what, is, what does that mean? Okay? Here, think of a sandwich. You got bread, you got meat or pe peanut butter and jelly. These guys are like peanut butter and jelly between the bread of life. <laughs> But you got bread, you got the meat, peanut butter and jelly or whatever, and then you got bread. The context is the whole sandwich, okay? But that's what it means, uh, searching the context. Think of it like a sandwich, you know? You got the bread on the top and the bottom, and then you got the meat in the middle, but the whole thing make the sandwich, okay? If you have a question about context, pause the video and search the scriptures daily. Why do these things be so? On your own. Read along with me because sometimes, as many of you have already figured out, sometimes this starts going a lot quicker than this and I might skip a groove or mispronounce or something like that. If I do, the brethren are quick to get on me with either putting the verse in the uh, description box or correcting me my speech. So Today, we are going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 6. It's time. This is something that personally I have been looking forward to for a while. But the Lord just never gave the green light to go ahead along with it. Okay? He never did. Until today. Until today. So, I am going to share with you what the Lord has shared with me. Okay? That's what we're going to do. We're going to have an expository look at Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, virtually every single verse. Alright? So, 
if, if you have one of these things or you know uh, I need three for that. <laughs> but if you have one of the, the, those things like a ribbon marker today's the day that you'll use it okay this video is intended for the saints of the church of God which is the church of the living God the ground and pillar of truth okay so let us begin Isaiah chapter 6 we're going to begin with ver reading verses 1 on to verse 2 in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and it stood above it stood the sephirims, seraphims excuse me each one had six wings with twain he covered his face twain means two and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple now that's not like a train of uh, box cars or anything like that train all that he is filled the temple okay but to understand this, let's look at King Uzziah. Go to 2 Chronicles 26. 2 Chronicles 26. Let us start with reading verses 1 on to verse 5. King Uzziah. King Uzziah. Okay. Isaiah speaks of Uzziah. But we are going to be looking here in 2 Chronicles 26. Let us begin at verses 1 on to verse 5. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. He, be, he built Eloth and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his fathers. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 2 years. You do the math on your own time. Thank you very much. In Jerusalem so 50 and two years in Jerusalem he reigned quite a while he reigned quite a while and what's interesting to note about Uzziah is the procession of kings that would come after for example after Uzziah we have Jotham and of course after Jotham you have the wonderful Ahab Ahaz okay and then of course after Ahaz you have Hezekiah then after Hezekiah you have Manasseh okay and so on and so forth okay Josiah was one of the last great godly kings in the chronology of the kings of course the greatest of all kings is the son of David our Lord Jesus Christ who is king of kings and lord of lords okay but what's significant here about Uzziah okay number one he had a 52 year reign verse 4 and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah did and he sought God in the days of, days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God as long as he sought the Lord God made him to prosper hence why we began with Romans 15 4 and looking in 2nd Timothy instruction and in righteousness you gotta rightly divide the word of truth there <laughs> you richling I, 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 I. anyway alright this is a different dispensation eternal <laughs> security was not there it was faith and works under the law <laughs> not by grace through faith oh you're playing off of people's ignorance and not feeding them up the dosage buddy but but we have to remember that okay during the dispensation uh, under the law 
Eternal security was not there. They had animal sacrifices to do to um, cover sin, not wash it away. Okay? All right? So eternal security was not there. And also, it wasn't finished. The law wasn't fulfilled yet. Okay? So hence, and, it, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Okay? So Uzziah was a godly king. And if you were to read from... You, now, here, see, this is what you do. You pause the video. And you read verses 6 on to verse 14. Okay? For your own context. We're not going to cover that today. But you can read of just how the Lord blessed Uzziah for doing things his way. And how Uzziah was putting the Lord first. And how the Lord prospered and blessed Uzziah and things he was doing. But something happened. Verse 15 on to verse 21. And we're going to have a stop along the way. And he, Uzziah, made in Jerusalem engines. Invented by cunning men. To be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones with all. I believe the modern term is a trebuchet. This is referring to, I believe. One of you can correct me in the description, in the comments. Okay? And his name spread far abroad. People knew about King Uzziah. Because why? For he was marvelously helped Till he was strong. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let, let's let the scripture say what you saints are already figuring out in your head. Let's, let's have the scripture say it for us. Deuteronomy 13, 32, excuse me, verses 15 on verse 18. But just run, waxed fat, and kicked. Just run means highly favored. Okay? Uzziah was highly favored. As Israel was highly favored. As we saints are highly favored. Grace is God's favor. Okay? You haven't figured that out. You saints have because you know it. The devils and all them guys, they have no clue. They have no clue. Okay? But, just run wax fat and kicked. Thou art wax and fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock, capital R there, of his salvation. And that rock that followed them was Christ. Yeah. Okay? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up. Whom your fathers feared not. Of the capital R rock that begat thee thou art unmindful. And hast forgotten God that formed thee. Go back now to Second Chronicles 26 verse 16. But when he was strong. His heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. Uzziah took it upon himself something that was clearly not intended for him to do. But see, he's the king. What, who's going to do what? I can do anything. I'm the king. If I want to do this, I can do this. Who are you to stop me? He lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Now granted, he 
uh, in the text, we don't see him bringing in anything about, you know, idols or anything like that. But his pride, he was, he was what? Lifted up until he was strong. But when, his, when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. So he was thinking him more highly of himself than he ought to have thought. What does that mean? He was in idolatry. He was idolizing himself because he's the king. Hey, I'm the king. Look at all the things that I've done. Why can't I go and uh, offer this incense? Let's read. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men, and withstood Uzziah the king, and said unto him, Whoa, dude, whoa, it appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron. This is a different dispensation under the law, which is by which it was of faith and works. People's ignorance is what you play upon. That's why you can get away with lying to people that it's by grace through faith. By the, from beginning to end. You wicked devil. Anyway. They that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary. For thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Different dispensation. Remember people you got to rightly divide the word of truth. But Uzziah. It's right there. Uzziah took it upon himself to do something clearly. And you read the book of Leviticus. Read the Torah. Okay, read the book of Leviticus. That was not for King Uzziah to do, but yet he's king. The scales are where his pride. But yet he was a godly king. He was a godly king. He was a godly king. Okay? Then Uzziah, verse 19, was wroth. Who are you to do? What? I'm the king. Do you not see all this stuff that's been building? The engines and all that. You know, people have heard of me. Okay? Who are you? Okay? I, I can do this. I'm king. You are your own God. Then Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. Picture that. The priests are warning Uzziah. And then all of a sudden, leprosy breaks out in his forehead. Okay, you can tie in all kinds of stuff with that. We're not going there, but that's, you can do it on your own. Okay? And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him. Oh, wow, dude. <laughs> okay? <laughs> And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in the forehead. And they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. They're like, Dude, get you, get you, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was quite a heavy price. And one that he could not get over in the physical sense. I believe absolutely that King Uzziah is in heaven. Absolutely. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death. And dwelt in a several house being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham his son was over the king's house judging the people of the land. So because Uzziah took it upon himself to be doing something that the Lord said for someone else to do, King Uzziah was put away in a way. And Jotham basically ruled as vice regent, if you were. Now when you go back to Isaiah chapter 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Hmm? 
Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. So when Uzziah died, who was a godly king and a good king, but he got messed up in pride, okay, after his death is when Isaiah saw the Lord lifted up. Uzziah was a godly king. And the, the procession of kings, Jotham, then Ahaz, okay? And it was bad, good, good, bad, bad, good, okay? That is significant. Because when we, we, we're seeing, we're seeing today in the falling away, a lot of people who claim to be of us, but they were never of us in the first place. But they clung to us by flatteries, more or less. Okay, remember, saved people fall. Lost people, false converts, fall away. And when we see people falling away, we as saints, it's like, wow, <laughs> those that are alive and remain, that's when we look to the Lord. Okay? Verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Trinitarians like this one because they think it's talking about three <laughs> persons, which is insanity. That's crazy. That's satanic. Okay? Three persons that make one God, you lying dogs. Okay? That is satanic. Okay? But, Romans chapter 11. Holy, holy, holy. Romans chapter 11. You, now, you all are thinking about uh, Revelation 4. I get that. I get that. But Romans 11, verses 11 on to verse 16. Check this out. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. That's the sign for the Jews today. That when they see a goyim like me, and the majority of you, and they see their God in you, provokes them to jealousy. Okay? That's the intent. And I tell you, I have known and do know quite a few saved Hebrews. And one of them is, of, is jealous of what they see in this laughing stock which is in Christianity. Not one of them is jealous of that. Because they know it's not the legitimate thing. But let's continue. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world... And the diminishing of them be and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Like I've said in a previous video, okay? Some of these wicked devils, these <laughs> Richlingites, uh, if they were truly saved, wow. Wow, what a, what allies we could have. But when the year King Uzziah died. We see the Lord lifted up, right? You get it? That's the significance of it, okay? For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. When a Hebrew, a Jew, comes to the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. The Lord's way! Broken of your self-righteousness, you twit! <laughs> they don't get it. Manning up, godly sorrow, having contrition, and fearing the Lord, and calling upon His name. Okay? And the Lord saves you. When a Hebrew comes to their God, that zeal, 
that propensity that is ingrained in the Hebraic people. Wow, it's quite a sight to see. It's quite a sight to see. For if the casting of away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, you, you know where we're going, don't you? And the lump, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. I am the vine, ye are the branches. My father is the husband gray, or whatever. I've, however, that one of you put that in the, the comment section, right? Please, okay. Was not Christ the first fruits of this dispensation? Being raised from the dead? Yeah. And those that come to him in this dispensation, we're talking about because this is this dispensation, which is by his grace through our faith, absolutely. Okay. Um, we come to him on his terms. The lump is holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay. Ezekiel 39, Ezekiel 39, just one verse, pause the video, pause the video and read the context, okay, this is about Gog and Magog, uh, by the way, Gog and Magog, okay, happens at when Satan is let loose out of the bottomless pit after the thousand years okay so there's going to be quite a while before Gog and Magog thing actually comes to pass scripturally okay so we it is be, to be mindful of that for future events yes but that's going to be for a while yet but Ezekiel 39 verse 7 one verse so will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Holy One in Israel. And, I, and we got to do this. It's so handy and come which talks about God, God, Father, the Word. Well, here, let's, let's go there. 1 John 5, verses 6 on to verse 8. This is He that came by water and blood. Okay, now remember, water baptism does not save you. It's not a requirement. Peter in Acts chapter 2 was going off what he knew about the baptism of John and was doing that kind of thing as well. It was still this dispensation, which is by grace through faith. But it is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? We've talked about that in a multitude of videos. Okay, The baptism video will be in the description box for you once again. Okay, But, alright, 1 John chapter 5, verses 6 on to verse 8. This is he that came by water and blood. Water, signifying a natural birth. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh, okay? Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. And the Lord is that Spirit. Okay, one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You're, you're made in the Im image of God. Even you Richlingites are made in the image of God. You have a spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> Seared that conscience pretty well, but whatever. Okay? And when you look at verse 6, the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. And Mary was with child by the Holy Ghost. Not that nonsense that morons, Mormons, tell you that God appeared to Mary in uh, the body of a man and they had... No! No! No, no, no. 
And it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. Okay? So the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, and Mary was with child by the Holy Ghost. And the Lord Jesus Christ had a natural birth, and he shed his blood on the cross. Okay? You, you get it? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> and here's, here's the one. Here's the one. Here's the one that these heretics, they hate this. They hate this. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, which is the soul of the Godhead. The Word made flesh, capital W, one of seven appearances. And the Holy Ghost, Spirit, not a little bird that goes poop on people's head. And these three are one person. It doesn't say person, but these three are one. Oh, that's right. It's, there are three persons, right? And these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. One. Not three persons. And these three are three persons? No. These three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. A three-person trinity you see in the book of Revelation it's the devil the beast and the false prophet there's your trinity the trinity friends is satanic it is heresy it began in Babylon crafted in Egypt perfected in Catholicism okay all right beware of the trinity it is not of God this is talking about the Godhead the father which is the soul the word made flesh and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not three persons. Insanity. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay? Because water is of the earth. Okay? The spirit, God, God himself. And the blood... On the cross, okay? All right? Very simple to understand that. Very, very simple. Now let's go to where everyone, all of you, even you devils, were thinking of. Revelation chapter 4, verses 8 on to verse 11. Well, you know what? We got some time. Let's read the whole chapter. And after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter that's that's the redemption of the purchase possession okay. that's the redemption of the purchase possession the catching way of the body of Christ for the time of Jacob's show that's it right there and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Spirit, so God. Yeah. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne... And round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Okay? And when those beasts gave, give glory 
and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. I've heard some atheists who were really having a beautiful pity party come to that when you inform an atheist, it's like, well, why did God create me? For his pleasure? Oh, then he must be a sadist because he loves to watch me suffer. No, he wants you to come to him. But see, he has a certain prescribed way that he wants you to come to him. Okay? He does. He does. And that's the part that the heretics don't want to acknowledge. Okay? All right? There are no oopsies. Go back to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 4. You're going to love this. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Now, you look at verse 1, and his train filled the temple, and verse 4, and the house was filled with smoke, signifying that God fills all in all. Okay? God is our all. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, He is our all. He is everything. He fills all things. Okay? God is all. Alright? But, verse 4. <laughs> See, our enemies, brethren, our enemies know just as well as we do that people are ignorant of the Scriptures. The enemies know just as well as we do that Satan with his yea hath God said, his textual criticism, and all the multitude of Bibles out there, okay, he, they know that most people don't know the Scriptures. They know very well that most people have no clue of what it means to rightly divide the word of truth. That's why these devils can get away with deceiving you people because... There's a famine in the land. Not in its entirety as it will be in the future. But we, we will touch on that in a little bit. We will touch on that in a little bit somewhere within the notes here. Yes, we will. But John chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Boot the door. That's an obvious, I'm lost here. Look at my boot the door. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay? But, a thief climbs up some other way. Jesus Christ is the door. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And out, you know, to go. Okay, let's continue. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Oh yeah, thieves and robbers. You boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way with your satanic, pathetic, just believe, jumping over brokenness and contrition. Okay? Absolutely. 
or you're elect because of your skin color or elect a non-elect or you go to a church building whatever whatever okay verse 9 I am the door I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved if circle that if if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in shall go in and again out out get out and find pasture Refer the Lord is reference making reference onto the redemption of the purchased possession okay the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy keeping you comfortable in sin and justifying anything just like the Jesuits who can justify any sin with their um, probabilism doctrine you look that up about probable the Jesuit the Jesuit doctrine of probabilism okay uh, on the channel there's something where that's mentioned actually if I remember uh, I'll put that in the description box. Uh, I'm just I'm writing this down for links, okay? But the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly in him. Not in a justification of your sin or whatever it is you want to justify yourself in. Kind of like what King Uzziah was trying to do. Very, very interesting. But yes, Jesus Christ, he is the door. He is the only way. Okay? Go back to Isaiah chapter 6. Verse 5. I love this. This is great. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Romans 7. Romans 7. The key ingredient that the free grace, easy believism, Richlingite likes to avoid and make false converts and damn people to hell. Romans 7, verses 15 on to verse 20. Paul, the greatest of the saints of the church of God. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Paul was broken. Paul had contrition. Paul had to fear the Lord. Paul called on the name of the Lord. Wow. I guess Paul was backloading works into salvation, you twit. <laughs> but see, as a saint... A saved saint who sins. Paul wanted no sin in his life, but he understood because of the flesh it was impossible. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good, because by the law is the knowledge of sin. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. See, he's not disassociating. He's saying, me, there. Sin in me. Brad, you're saved. Yes, I am. How is there sin in you? Right here. The flesh. Okay? The flesh. All right? For I know that... See, he answers it. <laughs> For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. <laughs> now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Skip to verse 
O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. And Isaiah there in verse 5, Woe is me, for I am undone. <laughs> for that which I do I allow not. For what I would that do I not, but what I hate that do I. Because I am a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, Lord of hosts. <laughs> and of course, let's go to the, um, <laughs> the Richlingites' most hated group of scriptures. Come on, you know where we're going, brethren. Romans 3. 10 on verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. No, not one. Verse 5, And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And you get a glimpse of the Lord and His beauty, His perfection, His grace, His mercy, His kindness. What are we? But you must be something because God loved you enough to die for you, right? Therefore, you're special. Therefore, you can save yourself by your own belief. Therefore, you're a chosen elect, right? Oh. <laughs> oh, let's go back to Romans 3. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. See Isaiah like Paul. Lord, who am I? I, I I'm on, of unclean lips. And look at everybody. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used to see. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace. Have they not known? Young brother, Lord willing, that will come sometime this week. Okay, thank you, by the way. Thank you. You know, you, you both know what I'm talking about. But this came first. <laughs> there is no fear of God before their eyes. I cast at you what you cast at me. You're going to stand at the great white throne and give an account for all the heresy and how you're leading people to hell. I'm going to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, giving an account for everything that I've taught, that He has done through me. Absolutely. I want to be in your shoes, pal. Okay? Now go back to Isaiah chapter 6. And let's read verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Check this out. Acts chapter 4. Verse 10 on to verse 12. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, yes, the Lord is alive today, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the headstone of the corner. I know there's a difference between a lump of coal and a stone. I get that. I understand that. But you see what's being referenced in Isaiah chapter 6. Okay? Isaiah saw the Lord. He saw his own brokenness. Okay? He knew that there was only one way. And he saw that everyone else is evil <laughs> okay all right and then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken from the with tongs from off the altar okay verse 11 in acts 4 again this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which has become the head of the corner neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven 
given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Uh, whose name? <laughs> whose name? Okay, I'm writing that down so I don't forget. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Free grace, easy believism. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, the capital W word of life, one of seven appearances in the authorized version of the scriptures. For the life was manifest, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifest unto us, because Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of Him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanseth us from some sin. Oh, excuse me. It says all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Atheists. I'm not a sinner. Well, I don't think I've sinned. Why, why do I need a Savior? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, I'm a saved uh, believer. I, I'm, I'm no longer, I no longer sin. I, I've, I'm, I'm clean. I, just as if I have never sinned. We make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Watch out for people saying, uh, you know, with this, sinless perfection lie okay <laughs> yeah yeah um, writing down links so I don't forget them okay go back to Isaiah chapter 6 verse 7 and he laid it upon my mouth interesting live coal alive coal Placed on the mouth. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, come on. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verses 8. On to verse 13. And verse 14 on to verse 17 is specifically talking about those who go out to preach the truth. Okay? That's what that's talking about, you devil. Okay? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, 
Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, what do Richlingites do? They bring up what? As did stupid head Christy Burke. She brought this up. Well, Joel. Joel. Now, remember. Remember in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 7, the thing about the mouth. This is imperative. And he laid it upon my mouth. And here we see for us today, yes, calling upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But what do the Richlingites do? They go to Joel. They go to Joel chapter 2, and they bring this up. Now, here is another product of people not rightly dividing the word of truth. Huh? I'll explain. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Now, pay attention. And it shall come to pass... Now, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, the uh, Richling Knight, the Free Gracer, Heretic, Easy Believers, and Pond Scum Devil, they come to that and see, well, see, that's for just the Jews. N no. No, not rightly dividing the word of truth. First of all, let's establish, okay, under the law, we see it in Isaiah, we see it here in Joel, under the law, the calling upon the name of the Lord, okay, but, see, in the dispensation, where it was by faith and works, and no eternal security, calling upon the name, see, the calling on the name of the Lord, crosses dispensational lines. But see, in a different dispensation where it is by faith and works, no eternal security under the law, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. In a dispensation where eternal security was not there. Christ hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, or shed his blood on the cross, yet had he. No, there was no eternal security. God was not a permanent resident in any believer under the law. Okay? The Lord was going to kill Moses because he hadn't circumcised his kids. Okay? There was no eternal security under the law. No, there wasn't. So, this is not a contradiction. See, people are not rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you've got these Richlingites who come along and try to twist this and say, well, see, Romans 10 is for the kids. No! Calling on the name of the Lord is something that crosses dispensational lines, you stupid idiot! Excuse me, excuse me. You're not stupid. You know what you're doing. You are an idiot. Not, you know, you really are not having a reason to but you're not stupid. Forgive me. You know exactly what you're doing, and you know who you are serving, and you know you are bringing people to hell. I wish it weren't that way. I wish it weren't that way. But it is what it is. So up to dosage and have your best life now. But, again... Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it will be faith and works again, not by grace through faith. Okay? During the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. In faith, you can see the guy, not by grace through faith. Okay? All right? See, their whole argument begins with not rightly dividing the word of truth. And they, uh, some of these guys say they're the Richlingites, especially. They, uh, they call themselves dispensational. Uh, okay. Romans chapter 10. For who, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not a contradiction. It's not that it's for the Jews. Calling on the name of the Lord 
crosses dispensational lines. But in Joel chapter 2 that we looked at, verse 32, it was in a dispensation where faith and works was the way, okay? No eternal security, okay? That seal was not there. So yes, deliver. Deliver, yes. Yes, today it's finished. So whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, oh what, what, what are you thinking about? Acts, uh, Acts 2, 21, right? Acts 2, 21, okay. Let's go there. Acts 2, 21. Remember, it was to the Jew first. After the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? To shed blood. It's finished. This dispensation, which is by His grace through faith. Okay? This dispensation began. So, Peter, in Acts 2.21, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Again, it's not a contradiction. Because... The death, burial, and resurrection brought in this dispensation which we are currently in. You wicked devil. You are deceiving people and you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? I know that. Unfortunately, the audience that a lot of you Richlingites and you free gracers go after, they don't know these things. So you are using the ignorance of Scripture as your strongest weapon. Because none of you can none of you do this kind of stuff? Oh, you'll quote scripture, but you get into philosophy and the church father, <clears throat> excuse me, and other authors. <laughs> okay? Pathetic, man. Well, look, this is their hour in the power of darkness, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do, right? <clears throat> what are we going to do? So it's not a contradiction. Keep that in mind the next time you run into a Richlingite or one of these guys who try to pull that on you. Well, Joel, it's for the Jews. No, rightly dividing the word of truth again, which these people don't do. Okay? So, go back to Isaiah chapter 6. And again, with verse 7, about the mouth, common. Oh, and they get so cute. What if they can't speak? They have God said, buddy. Bravo. Bravo. Verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Now, what happens when the Lord saves you today in this dispensation? You are part of his body. You are part of the church of the living God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and verse 21. Therefore, if... So if... Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are a new creature when the Lord dwells within you. Okay? The process of sanctification takes <clears throat> years and years and years and years and years okay but you are a new creature when the Lord dwells within you and seals you okay there are certain sects of Catholicism out there they're not new creatures yeah go figure and all things are of God remember the reference to train and the smoke Okay? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves the anointed one, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed to us, saved people, the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, 
be ye reconciled to God. How can you you be reconciled when an a person when a personal accountability has been avoided? How can you be reconciled like that? When your own self-righteousness has not been dealt with. It makes no sense, does it? Atheists, Muslims can get that. But some of these Christians? <laughs> for he hath made him to be sin for us, imputed righteousness. Which people who save themselves have no clue of. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may, might be made the righteousness of God in him. Back to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9. And he said, Go! <laughs> Go! Hey, Christy! Christy Burke! I really felt bad. I, I did, but it's like you. Uh, when Christy Burke, little stupid head, she said Jesus didn't want people to be, you're not supposed to be a teacher. It's like, oh, wow. You, you imbecile. You, you stupid child. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 on to verse 20. Uh, hold on, let's get the, the, whole, the whole thing here. Verse 9, Isaiah chapter 6. And he said, Go and tell this people. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach. Christy, teach. All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. One, one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. We already saw it, Jesus Christ. Hmm. Name of the, in the names of, no, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, spirit, soul, and body, one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved, Jesus Christ. It's simple. It's simple. But like that one Jesuit dude, the Trinity is meant to uh, confuse you. Uh, yeah! 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 Absolutely. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Christy. <laughs> Poor thing. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation, we pray you, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. You're not good. Okay? You put Christ on the cross. You can't hide under an umbrella. Anyway, Isaiah uh, 6, verse 9 again. And he said, Go. And tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Matthew chapter 13, not. Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 on to verse 15. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven, here we're in Matthew, is always a reference onto the physical, literal kingdom. Okay? Not the spiritual one. Okay? Remember that. That's why you only see it in the book of Matthew. Okay? But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not our instruction in righteousness, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Okay? Now you roll that around in your head for our instruction in righteousness. You're a saved saint, okay? Um, even the smallest morsels of scripture that you read, the Lord will water that and make that to grow. These guys ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
Hey, brother, can you put that verse in the description box for me? Please, I won't remember. Please, thank you. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand, because the natural man can receive, doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God, because they are foolishness unto him. Okay? Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, what we are looking at right now, okay? Which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Verse 15, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Okay? Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Verses 10. On to verse 13. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Spiritual. Spiritual. Kingdom of heaven is the physical. Kingdom of God is spiritual. Okay? There are times where it can be a reference unto the kingdom of heaven. But again, remember the sandwich that's in context. But unto those that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive. And hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sin should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then shall ye know all parables? Talking about the sower and the seed. Okay? Uh, let's go now to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verses 37 on verse 41. But though he had done so many miracles before them, that they believed not on him. But you read in John, many believed on him. Oh, a lot of people believe, just like the devils do. But a lot of people believed. And at the end, those same people that believed on him, because he told them the truth, and put the one finger on the thing that he didn't like that they were doing, what did they end up doing? They wanted to stone him. not funny. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? That's a reference on Isaiah 53. Therefore they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, referencing 6, what we're looking at, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and speak of him. And then right away it's like, well, the, the, you know, the Calvinist, well, he hardens people. We've addressed that before. But see, if you choose to be your own God and save yourself by your own belief or whatever nonsense you want to adhere to, you choose contrary to that and make the choice and go after that, the Lord will give you what you want. Okay? The Lord will give you what you want. Acts 28. Acts 28. Verses, where are we? 23 out of verse 28. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging. This is Paul when he was in captivity. To whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, spiritual, persuading them concerning Jesus both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, 
and I should, and I should heal them. Be it known, therefore, unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. They will hear it. They will hear it. Someone who is not self-righteous. Because brethren, brethren, come on. You've been in situations before, witnessing unto people. Salvation is simple. Clear, plain as day. It is. What's the hard part for these people? Their self-righteousness. That's the hard part. Getting over yourself that ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? And you're going to call that a work. But yet, you save yourself by your own belief. You're crazy. But brethren, you've been in situations. I know you have. You've laid down the gospel simply. You've showed them, oh, hey dude, God says you're not good. Okay, you're not good. <laughs> you deserve to go to hell. I'm better than... Seeing, they don't see. Hearing, they don't hear. Understanding, but not understanding. Why? Because they will be like the Most High. Salvation is simple today. Yes, it is. The hard part is getting over yourself. The hard part is being unlike Adam. The woman thou gavest me to be with. She did give me the tree and I did eat. The hard part is the lesser calling on the greater out of fear. That's what's hard about it. And when someone comes around, gets rid of all that, and says, just believe. Now, there are people, lots of atheists and Muslims, it's like, that, you, you, that makes no sense. And it doesn't. And it doesn't. But then again, they run into the same trap of the self-righteousness. That's your problem, guys. And you have already exhibited as well. Okay? <laughs> yes. Let's read verse 9 again, shall we? And then go into verse 10. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Verse 10. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. This is why the Romans road to salvation, which the Inquisitor, a, uh, a Richlingite from New York, also did a whole thing about saying the Romans road is heresy, road leads you to hell. Coming from a Jesuit, like, uh, you know, Richlingites, you know, Jesuits. Um, second, uh, where, where are we at? Second Corinthians chapter 2, excuse me. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 17. Yes. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place, because he lives within us. Okay? Alright? And we are ambassadors for Christ, having a ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. 
walking as examples, living according to the scripture. Okay? Not being like the world or acting like the world like a lot of these free gracers and these Richlingites do. Okay? For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death. Isaiah 6 verse 10, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they, sh lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Verse 15 in 2 Corinthians 2, for we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death and unto the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. How do you corrupt the word of God? By not rightly dividing it. Okay? To start, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Hmm. Hmm. Acts chapter 2 now going off of what we just read here in uh, 2nd Corinthians where the savor of death unto death and the savor of life unto life okay all right also there is a thing where I thought of and I don't know where this video is where the word kills our self-righteousness but a false convert who doesn't have the Lord in them, guiding them on to all truth, they, who don't rightly divide the word of truth, can find anything in here to justify themselves, not rightly dividing the word of truth. But, Acts chapter 2, now we've covered this before, but we're going to cover it again. And again, people, Acts 2.38 is not the gospel. Already explained that, the baptism video will be for you in the description box. You wicked charismatic heretics. Acts to you Catholics who believe you got to be baptized in water like uh, like Robinson and all those heretics do. No, 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 no. But Acts chapter 2, verses 29 on to verse 27. Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, yes, he was a king and a prophet, who who else is a king, prophet, priest? Hmm, I wonder. Anyway. And knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Again, son of David is a reference unto Christ as king. King of the Jews. King of all things. King of Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Okay? He seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said, on, the Lord said unto my Lord, Excuse me. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. To the Jew first. This was this dispensation. Okay? Watch out for hyper-dispensationalists with their two bodies nonsense. This was this dispensation. Okay, by grace through faith. Okay? But look at what happened upon hearing the truth. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall I do? What shall I do? When you inform someone their need for a savior that they are not good 
that they put Christ on the cross. And then unless the Lord saved them, you go into hell. Someone who is at that point will ask, Man, brethren. <laughs> now that when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What's the contrast to that? See, as we saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 2. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. Who is sufficient for these things? Savor of life unto life. What shall we do? Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. But what happens when also the truth is given unto some? Oh, well, wait, getting ahead of ourselves. Acts chapter 5, verses 29, on to verse 33. Okay. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. As so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. Now he was talk, addressing self-righteous um, people, you know, like the Pharisees and Sadducees and stuff like that. You know, who, you know, I'm saved because I believe, or I'm elect, and you're not, sorry. Okay? What they, how'd they take that? When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So a little pricking of the heart brings out a little blood, but it's like, what must I do? When a cutting of the heart <laughs> leads them to slay them. Oh, and let's go to where most of you were thinking of. He's going to Acts chapter 7, verses 48 on to verse 54. And here's another thing that a lot of these uh, Christians hate. Albeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, uh, church buildings. Okay? Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? What is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked, and uncircumcised and hardened ears, having eyes to see, but you don't see. Having ears to hear, but you don't hear. And your heart's being hardened. Mm. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and heartened ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels. And have not kept it. And it's interesting. All a lot of these free gracers and these uh, these easy believism uh, Richlingites from their fathers, their Jesuit fathers. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Verse fifty-five. Uh, verse fifty-four. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Savor of life unto life. Savor of death unto death. See, when you present to someone who is self-righteous the true gospel, okay, who are stuck on themselves, it cuts them to the heart. They seek to destroy you and gnash on you with, your, with their teeth and stone you. Someone who is at that place of brokenness when there is no hope. When they've reached that point where I can't do any better. Even if you give me today, I can't do any better. Everything I've touched turns to dung. The heart is pricked. What must I do? 
Uh, while we're in Acts, Acts chapter 3, verses 19, on to verse 21. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, who which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of of all his holy prophets since the world began. See, even Peter and the apostles who are going to the Jews first before Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7 is significant because with the stoning of Stephen, that was the rejection of Jewry of the gospel, the kingdom of God. Okay, And of course it goes into Acts chapter 8. But see, even thus, in this dispensation, which is what I'm driving at and have been and do, ever since the beginning okay the repentance today is your self righteousness you don't save yourself it is by his grace through faith okay his grace through faith and what is the source of our grace Jesus Christ okay even before Acts chapter 7, this dispensation, everything they were saying was there to break these people, to break the Pharisees of their self-righteousness, to, to, to break the people. Brokenness is a requirement. Don't be deceived by these lying devils, especially these Richlingites. Don't be deceived by them. Brokenness, contrition, Fear of the Lord. Those are requirements. And see when that is in you. Which happens in one fell swoop. You can't wait to call upon. You can't, the lesser, can't wait to call upon the greater. But see, you're the greater because you save yourself by your own belief. <coughs> Bunch of crazy people, man. Bunch of crazy people. Now back to Isaiah chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Then said the Lord, then, excuse me, then said I, Lord, how long? Oh, Jesus, how long, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land utterly be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away. And there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Now, twofold we're going to approach this. A great forsaking in the midst of the land. Now, Amos chapter 8, which already referenced. Amos chapter 8, the fulfillment of Amos chapter 8. Okay, verses 11 and 12. The fulfillment is future. But we are seeing type of it, a, some sort of this today with the Yea hath God said Bibles and the ignorance of God's word, which our enemies are working off of because they know that people are ignorant generally of the scriptures. Okay? With, because they have Bibles, not Scripture. They go to a church building. They don't carry even their Bibles. What is the perfect Word of God? Right? Amos chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 12. The older days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a thirst, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? That's in Romans chapter 10, by the way. Okay? Now, the fulfillment of this, obviously, during the time of Jacob's trouble, when they take the mark of the beast in the right hand or in their forehead, something happens. Whether it's the fun vax thing or whatever it is that they experimented with with the uh, Jesuit psychological operation that they pulled off a couple years ago. Okay? Whatever it is, something is going to happen when you take that mark in your right hand or in your forehead, you're, you're going to hell. 
You're, that's it. I believe that the mark itself is going to do something to the brain of the individual, making it to ingratiate them against God. Hence, eternally damned. Then people, well, why not just remove it? The Lord specifically says in Revelation chapter 14, Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever. Well, what about the say, uh, sealed saints? Uh, you really think a sealed saint during the time of Jacob's trouble is going to... No, shut up. Go away with your yea hath God said, Jesuitical double speak and uh, circular reasoning. Go away. Okay? No, no. You take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to hell. That's it. Today, however, for our instruction in righteousness, okay, what's the word of God? Hmm? Well, the, the King James is the closest we got, but it's not perfect. Yea, hath God said. The NIV, well, not the NIV, but the, the what's that one MacArthur did? The LSD? No. Oh, oh, living standard Bible, LSD. Yeah, it makes you hallucinate, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, these are good, but we don't have a perfect, we don't have a perfect word. The originals were perfect, and they themselves know that they, they don't exist. Uh, the authorized version is perfect. Heresy! Go away. Go away. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro and seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Because their minds have been ingratiated against it for the time of Jacob's fall. And today, for our instruction in righteousness, they're keeping, you know, like they're searching for something to prove evolution, and there is no proof of evolution. None. Okay? It's a fairy tale. You know, they make things up. Okay? Also from that, 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4, and because people are ignorant today, what is the word of God? And the audience of these people, especially the free grace people, the Richlingites, are going after people who are not in the word, who don't rightly divide. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 1, on to verse 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. I'm a good person. I save myself by my own belief. Yes. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned onto fables. First Timothy chapter 4. 1 and 2. Now the Spirit is speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And Isaiah chapter 30, verses 9, on to verse 11. <clears throat> That this is a rebellious people. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not to us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy to seers. Just believe. Just believe. Yeah. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Now go back there to uh, Isaiah chapter 6. 
Now let's read verses 11 and 12 again. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, which is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Matthew 23 is talking about the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Matthew 24, verses 15 on to verse 22. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, that man of sin, the son of perdition, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, Whoso readeth, let him understand. When that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes in to stand in the third rebuilt temple, during the time of Jacob's trouble, when the body of Christ will not be on the earth, during the dispensation which will be faith and works, a throwback to under the law. In a way. In a way. Okay? In a way. We've talked about that before. Okay? But see, the difference is, Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they have to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Faith and works. Because the only eternal security that is there during the time of Jacob's trouble is for the 144,000 Jews. Elsewise, you take that mark, you're going to hell. Okay? Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field turn back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Yes, the Sabbath day will be returning during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right? This, this is simple stuff, brethren. For then shall be great tribulation. I don't see the word done in front of it. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not, say, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be Isaiah chapter 6 verse 11 again then said I Lord how long and he answered until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate when things look like they're at their worst when jewelry understands oh wow those Church of the Living God with their glorious King James Bible. Wow, they were telling us the truth all along. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect, and in this context, the elect is the Jewish people, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Verse 12 in Isaiah 6. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Now let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which is doctrine for us today. Heretic. You just like the Richlingites who say that Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul was writing for the time of Jacob's trouble. These guys have no, they know what they're doing. Watch out for them. The Pauline epistles is doctrine specific for us today. He was not writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. He warned about what was going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble, but it is all doctrine for us today. Watch out. That's another one of their tricks. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 out of verse 12. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Sure does. Only he who now letteth will let 
until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. God, unlike some old farts want to tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. Okay? He's not going anywhere. What is going to be going someplace? Hey, you Christians, you ain't going nowhere. After the body of Christ, the saints of the church of God get redeemed, they're going to be a whole lot of you Christians down here. Christians are not going anywhere. You're right. Christians are going through the great tribulation. <laughs> yeah. The saints of the church of the living God. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay? That's the redemption of the purchased possession. The body of Christ. The body of Christ is letting, stopping, hindering that man of sin, the son of perdition, from being revealed. Okay? Falling away, which those who claim to be of us, but were never of us, they're being made manifest that they were never saved in the first place, but clung to us by flatteries. Okay? That's the falling away. Saved people get messed up all the time. I've known brethren. I've talked to brethren. Sisters, amen. We, we mess up. We make mistakes. We sin. Yes, we do. Lost people. False converts are the ones who fall away. Don't let someone from Oregon tell you otherwise. <clears throat> and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, that man of sin and perdition. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Today, absolutely, which this is doctrine for, you don't want to receive, you don't receive the love of the truth. Jesus Christ, Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is love. Remember? Even some of you heretics would go to that one. Okay? Yeah. All right? But you want to believe a lie that you save yourself by your own belief? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Great forsaken. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. <laughs> is Arturo Sosa a saved man some actually I don't know how to work that to reveal the results but I will after a while some actually said well I don't know his heart of course you lukewarm pathetic Richlingites Jesuits would say something like that <laughs> crazy crazy but a great forsaking in the land? A great forsaking in the land? And the Lord have removed men far away? And there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land? I'm not saying that verse 11 is a, is a direct link onto the redemption of the purchased possession. I'm not saying that. Kind of fits though, doesn't it? Verse 13. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So the holy seed shall be the substance. But yet it shall be, but yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten, as a teal tree, and as an oak 
whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance. And of course that man of sin is going to go off and try during the time of Jacob's trouble after he goes into the third rebuilt temple and try to say, I am having the visage of uh, the Roman Catholic Jesus and Jewry, that remnant that hasn't taken the mark of the beast. They're going to see, be like, oh wow. And here's the hope. Romans 11. Romans 11. This is 2 on to verse 4. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. 25 on verse 29. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Wise in your own conceits that the church has replaced Israel. Yeah, replacement theology. That blindness in part, in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles would come in. In part. Okay? The church has not replaced Israel. Okay. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Now right there, election ought to be self-evident unto any of you who are reading scripture with me. Okay? Election. The Father's sake. The Jesuit fathers, shut up. No. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Context. Election there is not the stupid Calvinism stuff. No. Election there, beloved for the father's sake. Context. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Verse 29. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. His chosen people. We Gentiles are grafted in to make them jealous. Okay? And I assure you, any Hebrew worth their salt at all, and believe me, I've got a lot of experience with this, they look at what is called Christianity today. <laughs> look at you, Goya. Look at you, Goya. Look at all of this nonsense. You and y'all don't even agree with yourselves. You know? Yeah. Because Jewry is not being shown their God in Christianity. But in the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And see, see, what a one of the best things that uh, the Lord had me and our, my best friend, uh, Brother Alexander, to do, one of the best ones, was what is a saint, uh, which will be in the description box, because immediately again, when you hear saint, you think of a, self, uh, of a sinless, perfect uh, person glorified by Catholicism. It's not what a saint is. Questions in the description box, okay? For the gifts uh, and calling of God are without repentance. Let's read verses 30 and 31. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that, they, that through your mercy they also may obtain, um, may obtain. And let me read that again. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. Now see, easy believism does have a branch 
that goes after the Hebraic people. It's called One for Israel. Now, some of their testimonies, I do believe some of them are saved, but One for Israel is a Jewish version, pretty much, of easy believism. Pretty much. But then again, the true gospel is an offense to the Jew first. One moment, please. Now, this is where some of you who don't like to hear gospel, or excuse me, um, hymns, because, um, you know, there are scriptural hymns. They're called psalms. <laughs> but here's where some of you might want to run away. Not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher nor the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher nor the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father nor my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father nor my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the stranger nor my neighbor, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer not the stranger nor my neighbor but it's me O oh lord standing in the need of prayer it's me it's me it's me O oh lord standing in the need of prayer it's me it's me it's me O oh lord standing in the need of Thank you for watching this video if you do. Um, I hope uh, I hope the Lord be glorified. That's all I care about. Lord be glorified. Um, Lord be glorified. That's all I care about, man. His glory, not mine. You, some of you are like, Fred, you're saying, I know, whatever. I know. Thank you for watching this if you do. Pray. Pray for each other. Are you the one who needs prayer? But anyway, um, like I said, um, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning and um, I didn't really know what the Lord was going to have done. Like I said, um, myself and a dear young brother have got some things going for video. But uh, the Lord today, it's like, no. It's time today. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't really always enjoy doing videos. I, I really don't. I really don't. Um, I, I, there are some videos which I just, like, oh, I don't want to do that. But it's like, this is not up to me. I'm not the boss, you see. It's not me. Not me. Anyway, we're going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you. Please keep each other in prayer. Please pray for one another. And um, very quickly, those of you saints do, that have my phone number, I, I have to remind this, uh, remind you of this. I don't know. I don't know what happened with my cell phone here. Um, something with the app 
with the voicemail. I can't get voicemail. You can email me a message, text me a message. Voicemail is useless with me. Okay, so anyway, that's it. I love you. We love you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.